I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're unveiling the poignant journey of Danuta, as captured in a powerful book. It is called Danuta Growing Up Between Katyn and Auschwitz by Maria Schanzer Binienda. This riveting narrative sheds light on the resilience of a young Polish woman navigating the harrowing landscapes of World War II. The author weaves Danuta's personal story, her struggles with the broader context, the historical context of Poland's fight against German and Soviet forces, offering a unique lens on the war's impact on individual lives and the nation's quest for survival. We're delighted to have this very powerful author join us here today on Spotlight. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her important work. The book is below this interview. Maria, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Great to be here. Thank you. Let's give the folks at home an overview. Tell them what your book is about. Um, my book is about um, a young woman uh, named Danuta. And she was a sweet 17 uh, when World War II broke out. Uh, Danuta's story perfectly captures the fate of the Polish people during World War II. But in reality, this book is um, about the consequences of the criminal Ribbentrop-Mawotov Pact of August 1939. That pact sealed cooperation between Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union in uh, destroying and dividing between themselves the uh, nations and of Central Eastern European states. So this pact basically led to World War II. So um, Danuta's story encapsulates and reveals the consequences of this pact and show how German-Soviet friendship uh, worked in practice. Uh, this is a historical non-fiction uh, uh, supported with in-depth research and all characters are real people and all events took place in reality. So Danuta is not a an imagined character, a created character. She's actually a yes, a, she's a actually a, a relative of mine. Mm. Wonderful. Now to write the book, did you interview her? How did you learn her story so well? Uh, yes, I was. Uh, I spent with her a couple of years, and during that time, I was able to um, go uh, step by step. Step, and she was able to tell me her story, uh, you know, um, um, like I said, step by step, and I would write this down, come back to her, clarify the issues. This process uh, lasted a couple of years. Amazing. Well, the research... Yeah, she passed away, uh, you know, a couple of weeks before the book actually came to market. Mm. Well, the research shows because it's a very vivid heartfelt account of her struggles during that terrible time. Let me ask you this. The folks at home might be wondering, why is this important to me? Why is this book important to the American public? Is it uh, uh, to shine a light a little bit on the anti-Semitism that existed and the oppression that existed before, during, and after World War II? Uh, let me uh, first um, summarize briefly um, the story of Danuta just in, in, in a nutshell. Um, Danuta Fiance was murdered in the Katyn operation by the Soviets in 1940. Mm -hmm. Danuta's husband, Auschwitz prisoner, was murdered by the Germans in 1943. Danuta's best friends were killed by the Germans in the Warsaw Uprising of 1944. And Danuta's father was murdered by the Soviets in 1944. Uh, in all, about 3 million ethnic Poles and 3 million Polish Jews were murdered during World War II in Poland. So um, this uh, extermination of ethnic Poles in World War II is little known in the United States for a reason. Hmm. After Germany invaded the Soviet Union, the, um, the United States and the Soviet Union found themselves on the same side of the battlefield. Hmm. Since that moment, the policy of not 
upsetting Russia, effectively dominated the United States decisions and resulted in giving up on Polish independence at the Yalta Conference, as we know, right? Mm -hmm. So after the war, the so Soviets subjugated Poland and Eastern European country, casting a long shadow over the Allied victory. Uh, but this topic is very little known in the United States uh, for Americans. So in the spirit of political correctness towards Russia, there was a great determination in the United States to cover up the Soviet crimes against ethnic Poles. So the Katyn operation became the grave symbol of this policy where the Polish media in the US were ordered not to report anything on this horrific crime. This policy of mandatory silencing the genocide of ethnic Poles in World War II led, led to the deformation of our contemporary understanding of the causes and consequences of World War II and to the misunderstanding of the entire region. Mm. This situation can be called an incompleteness of history. The consequences of this policy are enormous to today because this incompleteness of history significantly distorts our perception and understanding of current international developments. Mm. And my book attempts to fill this void. Maria, let me ask you, how does the incompleteness of World War II history impact our perception of current events? Uh, this is a very important question, and uh, this incompleteness of history, or rather a distortion of history, negatively impacts the decision-making process in the United States today. First and foremost, the unwillingness to tell the truth about the Soviet and Russian crimes presents Russia in a more favorable light in the eyes of the American public that it deserves. That is why the American public has a hard time to understand the war in, in Ukraine and the pro-Russian propaganda dominates the thinking of a large segment of the American society. Unfortunately, a similar situation exists with Germany. Every American can knows about the Holocaust and the German exemplary repentance in terms of accepting the guilt for it, apologizing and paying monetary compensation to the Jewish people. But no one realizes that the same problem exists with respect to the Polish people. Mm. But when it comes to Poland, Germany keeps denying the guilt, has not apologized, has not paid any compensation for exuberant losses caused, and even today uses a rhetoric, rhetoric of racial supremacy towards the Polish people, similar to that of Nazi Germany propaganda before the invasion of 1939. And yet, because no one in the West pays attention to this problem, the United States treats Germany as an exemplary modern and progressive state properly equipped to govern the entire European Union today. What's the message of the book? Um, you know, um, on the 50th anniversary of, anniversary of the outbreak of World War II, the Polish Pope, John Paul II proclaimed a joint decision of Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union from August 1939 that sentenced Poland and other states to death was not without a precedence. Mm -hmm. It was the reverberation of what Poland's neighbors from West and East once decreed at the end of the 18th century when they partitioned Poland and had been in patronizing to the onset of the 20th century. And in the middle of the 20th century, the same decision of destruction and extermination was made once again by the two imperial powers. So the Pope concluded and called that a system must be created in which the economic and military supremacy shall never lead to the destruction of others and disregard for human rights. But this appeal 
uh, issued by the Polish Pope in 1989. At the time when the Soviet uh, was at, made, at the time when the Soviet Empire was losing its grip over uh, uh, the enslaved nations of the Central European Union, uh, European countries, and the West at that time celebrated the victory of the Solidarity Movement in Poland, the collapse of the Berlin Wall in Germany, and the end of the Cold War. Hence, the Pope's calling fell on deaf ears. Mm. Right. We didn't do anything about it. It was not until the end of 1990s that Russia began showing once again its imperialistic and expansionist ambitions. But the world chose not to notice. So that is why today we stand, one, stand once again at the cliff of another world war and the nation of Central Eastern Europe are once again on the verge of losing its independence and sovereignty to aggressive Russia and resurgent Germany, mm -hmm. while the entire world is once again on the verge of the war. So if we can learn one thing from history, it is this appeasement of the beast always leads to war. Exactly, exactly. You cannot appease the beast. It'll lead to war. It's a powerful statement. It's very, very true. You know this subject so well. Tell us a little bit about your background. Oh, yes. You know, a um, long time ago, when I was uh, young, <laughs> I was a supporter of the uh, Solidarity Movement in Poland. Mm -hmm. And so I I was actually fighting against the Jaruzelski uh, junta of um, uh, in Poland. Um, and after the imposition of martial law in December of 1981, mm -hmm. okay, um, and, um, the communist regime expelled millions of people from Poland, primarily the young people, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So I was one of them. I was expelled from Poland by the Jaruzelski junta, and I came to the United States in December of 1982. Mm -hmm. At that time, I already had my uh, my law degree from the University of Warsaw, and I was in the process of completing my postgraduate uh, program at, at, in journalism. Uh, coming to the United States, I, I obtained a Juris Doctor degree from uh, Rutgers University. And uh, throughout my professional career, I, I was working, I had been working as a corporate lawyer, taking part in the uh, restructuring and uh, um, this, this uh, in, the, uh, in the 90s, uh, there was this uh, spirit of uh, the end of history, if you remember, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. So I was also believing in the end of, of history and that the future is bright and wonderful, mm -hmm. uh, working uh, on, uh, on uh, um, joint ventures and acquisitions and basically building relations between the United United States and Poland. Uh, today, uh, I am an independent law practice, uh, practice professional, journalist, writer, and Polonia activist and NGO leader. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we're glad you did emigrate to the United States and know what was under trying circumstances, but the best and the brightest often come to the United States, which is why this is such a great country. We're delighted though, you did not forget from whence you came. You remembered what happened back in Poland. You remember the stories. You remember the strength of the Polish people who stood up against the Soviets and the Germans as well. And uh, you capture the story of Danuta and that era so wonderfully. The name of the book is Danuta, Growing Up Between Katyn and Auschwitz by Maria Schanzert Benienda. This is a riveting book that sheds light on the resilience of a young Polish woman who is living through terrible, terrible times, World War II. Maria, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Uh, thank you, my pleasure. Pleasure is all mine. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time, on Spotlight.